So what my family and I did is we moved into the 11th poorest zip code in the nation, the most violent zip code for over 100 years in the city of Dallas. I raised my two small daughters there, and it was there that we really uh, began to understand the blight of the poor. Uh, my family goes back to farming from the 1700s in rural America, where we were hardworking and uh, <clears throat> understood some facets of poverty, but not like uh, we did in urban America. You couldn't really understand it till you lived in it and right. saw it firsthand, right? Absolutely, and so we actually went into uh, 13 communities, 5,000 homes, 27,000 people. And we began to do a study of every individual in, in those homes, uh, from the children, uh, to the adults, to the crime, the blight, the poverty, rent, home ownership. It was an area that was 70% Latino, 28% black, 2% white. So we were a minority in that community. But what we found was that people had no hope. And so we went in and we began to study uh, the church and the impact of the church or the lack of impact. We began looking at free market solutions, government solutions, and we found that there was a systemic government solutions were not working. So what we did is we began to build a story, built a case for a free market solution. So we did that by creating a mapping system and that's where we use technology to go in and track every single home and tell re in real time what was going home, what was going on in these houses, especially as it related to crime. We created five, five teams. One was a criminal justice task force, one was a housing economic, one was health and wellness, one was education, and one was spiritual. And these are all five critical to really uh, eradicate poverty and blight and crime and to give every single American an opportunity to experience the American dream. Now what year was this when you went in? Uh, we started in 2003. Okay. And we did our study, it took about two to three years to really understand uh, that on every block there was a drug dealer. And, and that drug dealer controls uh, the whole block and he may control a section of blocks. Now the drug dealer was there because of economic incentive, right? Absolutely. It's an economics yeah. issue for the drug dealer because how are you gonna escape poverty? Well, the guy that's making money is the drug dealer, so I'll follow that pattern. Yeah, and what's interesting is most of the people that live on that block are good people. And they can be people of faith, but they've never had an opportunity to come out of the cycle of poverty, blight, or crime. So what we did is we took that drug dealer off the street uh, through our processes, and then we created an actually safe environment for that family to live. We went into the school systems. Uh, part of our teams that we worked with adopted every student in all five elementary schools and those mentors stayed with those individuals till they graduated. So we were reclaiming uh, the homes, the streets, the schools, and then we were doing wellness programs that I can get into a little bit later. Uh, but, the, but the key there was that we went to uh, individuals that were believers, followers of Jesus, and we said we have an opportunity uh, to actually buy out drug houses. Once we uh, targeted the drug house and we seized it, uh, we took that house, tore it down, built a new home. I found an African-American builder and he would build the home and where I found him building his houses, crime would drop up to 80%.